Okay, friends, you're right back here at Trapper Creek Checkpoint with Will Rhodes' team in at the official signing right there. And you can see that the volunteers have a cool little camp set up right here. And then the team, the second team to arrive, will come camping right in. This nice big setup. There's our parking boss right there, volunteer. Thanks to all the volunteers. Our vet's off to the side, ready to go with some other support. And then Brenda Mackey has Will's stuff ready to go because she can. He's an experienced veteran musher, so his handler, in this case his wife, can help out. So you're watching Will Rhodes, folks, coming in. Team number two behind Nick Petit with Jeff King right behind. Trapper Creek, Checkpoint, Willow 300, 2022. Day number two, here they come. There's Brenda getting her workout. Looks like they're going to do a big swing here. So she's going to help with the line. The trail park or the checkpoint parkers have a plan here. There's Will looking good. Hey, there he's going to do a nice move by Will. Look at that. If you're at home trying to take notes on how to mush, that is a checkpoint move to rewind and watch over again. He knows that that team can torque around. There's Nick Petit's team off. So now you have two teams into Trapper Creek, folks. It's warmed up to just around freezing. It was about minus 10 last night, minus plus 10, so like 10, 15 below. Uh, Northern Lights, beautiful night, and now the clouds have moved in. So you're looking at a warm-up here. It's just around zero degrees, heading up to the single digits lower teens today by sundown here in a couple hours. And very quiet Trapper Creek checkpoint. Only two teams in. On the left, Nick Petit's team. Go back one video, you'll see that. Uh, him arriving first and the whole ritual he went through getting his team bedded down in the straw and the veterinarians who are right there working with all his dogs and now they're ready to come and help out Mr. Will Rhodes from Fairbanks, Alaska. Mackey, Alaska distance sled dogs right there. Will and Brenda work hard throughout the year, always with their dogs, always on the program that they have for them. Will's currently sitting number two with Jeff King Behind it is official that Hugh Neff took a wrong turn uh, last night. We had talked about that a few times today, but now you can go watch uh, the tracker itself. Uh, the Iditarod 2022 fan club page put up a great video where you can see the teams all going the right direction, except for one bib that heads all the way down the loop. Uh, so Hugh lost about four hours there. He is into Sheep Creek right now. So if you were following that last night, uh, <clears throat> this is not a, um, a guided event. You can make wrong turns. You can miss turns. We've all seen that uh, throughout the years with, um, you know, famously Nick took that wrong turn a couple of years ago uh, and you are one the I did a rod. So you have, um, you know, how you have these moments where it can happen. It happens to all sorts of folks. Um, and, you know, here we are. We, we had a 100% humidity last night. Everything that you can see from my videos from, to sit in the landing, had all sorts of mist and snow particles. And so Andy Pohl today, our subject matter expert uh, at the Sheep Creek Lodge update today, he gave us a really good explanation as to what that can feel like at 2, 3 in the morning to have your rough surrounding your face and mist everywhere and you might just miss the turn and not even really notice it. And the dogs are feeling great and the trail looks great and you're just running right along. So... That's looked like what the Northern Whites and Hugh Neff did. They did it in very fine form, nice speed. I mean, I'm sure they had a great run. Uh, but unfortunately, you do have to be on the actual trail. The race judges and marshals and officials uh, won't count any extra miles as being uh, towards the race itself, of course. So that's just bonus time. A lot of these mushers are gearing up for Iditarod, and so they got some bonus miles. And I believe I just saw a comment here from our online audience that he was not given up. And I think that's great. Um, again, uh, we're not really here to worry about who wins these races. Um, Nick's in first place. He's won it before. It's likely he'll win it again. Uh, these races are about form. They're about bringing a beautiful team in. They're about really doing the dogs right and, 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 and mirroring best practices, showing best practices uh, up and down the chain. So if you're a rookie, you're learning from the best. If you're a veteran, you might pick up a new trick that a rookie has. It's all those, uh, all those things here. Who wins? Who comes in tenth? To me, it doesn't matter one bit. I want to see healthy, happy dogs, 
And if the dog team of Hugh Neff is enjoying this race and ends up doing a 350, I think that's even a better testament to the spirit of being out here and uh, the, the beauty of these trails and the, the, how much the dogs love to run. So let's see how that goes for him. There's Brenda helping out with the straw. Will's taking off booties. And the vets are right there. And then behind them, that's Nick Petit's team. They came in first. That's his handler, Brenda, who's working on covering up a dog with some more coat. So just giving your eyes something to feed on here, folks. You are watching this on FirstNet AT&T. So it's a high bandwidth streaming system here and an iPhone 11, which I really like this lens a lot. Uh, I hope you do too. I hope it's coming through clear at home and you feel like you're right here because you are. To the miracles of cell towers and all of it, you are right here with the Mackies as they get into this checkpoint and start working their routine. They have really good social media to follow too. I always enjoy it. They put up good videos of the dogs running and some of their best practices and what have you. So if you're looking to follow a good set of mushers as they go through life fully committed, this is a great one. And uh, we always like when they come by and come down here south of the Alaska range Appreciate that, Tyler. He said the quality is very good. It looks like it is to me, too. I've been trying to, um, over the years, figure out the best system for out here. Uh, this first net system is a real plus. And this rural part of Alaska it just works for me. It might not work other places in Alaska, but for this race and for Copper Basin, it seems to have done quite well. Yeah, look at that little tender moment there. No kisses. That's good. So if you're just tuning in, you're at the third checkpoint. You're at mile 175 of 300. You're on day two of the Willow 300. This is an Iditarod Yukon Quest qualifier. It's a mid-distance race. There's also a 150-mile version of it that is happening on a different tracker system. So go to trackleaders.com and join everybody who knows how to do this and follow those little dots around the map and check the little numbers that they say and how recently they updated and get all into that because that is a lot of fun you can teach kids how to do it school kids and and they can follow from their computers and devices and and then you can show them feeds like this shirt this is a family friendly feed your support and comments are always welcome i don't always get to my messages but i do really appreciate everybody's support this is a community community driven feed here I do this knowing what it's like to be at races and wishing that somebody else would do this when I'm not there. So <laughs> it's kind of like get it forward, right? Um, and we've had a lot of live streamers pop up over the last several years. I started oh, about five years ago when I was making Dog Power Movie and traveled the world with Team USA, filming all over the place from Alaska to Canada to Sweden to Norway, Germany, Italy, uh, Poland, raced in four world championships and have captained my team quite a bit at other world championships too. So kind of f this out over the years. And the goal is to bring you right there as if you were right here on the Parks Highway with Brenda Mackey. As they booty dogs, the booty dogs. Look at these two guys. I like you. I like you a lot. How are you? Yeah, you're beautiful. You're resting real nice. Some dogs are still, like, when they get in, they just kind of like, yep, I'm going to stand outside. Let's go ahead and go with it. All right, folks, the cell tower just uh, kicked back in here. We're about two and a half hours north of Anchorage at this point. So if you're looking where we are on the map, even though we're on the road system, we're, you'd have to land in Anchorage, drive up uh, quite a ways, and then you'd find us up here. So we are pretty out there. So... Uh, we're very grateful for the coverage that we get. There's Will Wodes right there, number team number two. And while we're waiting on Will, behind us over here is where Jeff King's going to come in. So, uh, and the following teams, the chase pack. So uh, Nick Petit with a very sizable lead. He's very used to this kind of situation. His team runs very swiftly through these trails. 
that's been uh, Nick's really mastered the art of the 300 mile race in terms of speed. Hard to hard to match step for step, paw for paw uh, when he can keep up those clips. But you've been seeing the team when they come in, and I've been showing you the transparency. They are frisky and they are you know just fired up. And then these dogs look beautiful too, and they're getting ready to have a nice nap. You can see all Nick's dogs are bedded down and napping. They're in their little ritual on the straw, feeling good, listening, napping, plenty of water, plenty of snacks. You were seeing Nick uh, give some meds earlier. That sometimes is like a Prilosec or uh, they're all approved by the veterinarians. Uh, everything here is, you can tell the veterinarians are all over, always here. Every feed I show, I, I show you them because I'm so impressed with their level of commitment and want you at home to be able to see, you know, they, they visit with every single dog. Every single one. Listen to their hearts and lungs, listen to them, look at their gums for perfusion, their eyes, make sure they're all feeling good, check their gates, check for any uh, issues that the mushers bring up, help them through some situations to see if they can maybe get a dinged up wrist to heal or something. Just like in other sports, not every ding means you have to have to stay home. Sometimes you can get through a ding. I remember the first time I met uh, Jen Seavey at Dallas's kennel uh, years ago when I went with the Norwegians. Uh, we, uh, we saw Jen working on her special essential oils and different liniments for the dogs and she had ways of really taking the swelling or a little zing out of a dog's wrist real quick very short order with wraps and essential oils and different topicals um, and of course the food nutrition is really important that helps a lot hydration level is really important all that stuff is really important uh, but there are folks who really always take it to the next level and uh, Jen CV jpod jpod zemini is one of them for sure so Learn as much as you can from folks who have made this their life. And have figured out all the ins and outs. Very little communication there. Those guys are working on theirs right there. Here's some trail folks. That's going to be the way out of here. So they're making sure that's all good and clear. There's no, uh, no rest of the weary out here. You just... It just keeps going, and so we talk about the back of the tail. Uh, that's the, the folks who are down there on the end of the, the race there, coming up towards checkpoints where staffing stays in place and waits for them, and this is a very um, volunteer organization here. So uh, I know that the race board wanted folks to know you're not always going to see checkpoint times and all that posted. Um, the volunteer effort is great, but it could use some more, of course. But you will see some live feeds, and we like to bring you right to the checkpoint. So this is what the volunteers have made for their comfort and to get through the night and tomorrow, because this will be a checkpoint uh, again as the teams head out from here after resting. They'll head to Forks Roadhouse to the northwest of us here. That's off the road system, and then they'll come back to this checkpoint. So uh, they made a little, a little camp there, and we have a handler waiting. And then we have Will and... Brenda talking about the race, the vets working on the dogs, making sure they have a clean bill of health. Every musher carries a vet book, and those have signatures in them and all that. So There you go. Take a little look at the two different sleds. They're pretty similar design there. They each have a little back... Uh, container there behind the runners. There's the two sleds. I'd imagine Nick's up at the Vitus gas station checkpoint getting a nice meal. Maybe taking a nap while his handler Brenda works over there. So here's Will's setup folks. And again all these complicated lines are what we rely on here. They're critical. Gotta have all these redundant connections. There's a lot of power being pulled on these sleds. 
Okay, there's uh, the hook on one side there, hook on the other. So he's got his, there, there we go. Look at that, two hooks, two big beaver mittens right there. And then a big park with a rough. Still some ice on the top of there. There's the stanchion standing on the runners there. And then of course you have your little seat back. So he's got a little seat drop there too. In fact, it's uh, it's a Hans Godsell sled. So it's another high quality sled that they both have got.